we looked at reciprocal functions before. So this is y equals 1 over f of x. We are now going to shift our focus to squared functions. So if you want to write this in your top left hand corner, this is y equals taking an entire function, right, and then multiplying it by itself, squaring it. Okay? Uh, now, really quick note, which I Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to leave it to the end because I don't have time for it. We'll see if we can circle back, okay? Just there was a notation thing, so it's not that important. All right. Now, again, we're going to think about this entirely visually, okay? Again, there are some important points, and they, thankfully, are quite in common with what we had a look at before. So, for example, when is y equal to 0? Here. What x value is it? It's 2. So, when y equals 0, what happens when you not take the reciprocal? When you square 0, what happens? Zero. You get 0. That's handy. What about 1? Where is y equal to 1? Can you see it? It's at x equals 3. Right? What's the square of 1? It's just 1. OK, now another important point we looked at before was negative 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. But we're not thinking of reciprocals right now. We're thinking about squares. The square of negative 1 is? Ah. So see, there's negative 1 down there. right? So therefore, when I square this guy, it's going to become? One. Okay, now, now think about this for a second. Year 11. Year 11. Think carefully. We're squaring this thing, right? At least in the worlds that we live in, when you square something, you always get out a positive answer. So in this case, unlike in the previous one, I don't really need to worry about sine, do I? Like this negative stuff, right? It's actually going to, once it's squared, it's going to be just like the positive stuff, right? And let's just do a couple more values just to be sure, right? Um, we've got, say, enough space to do here. When x equals 4, y is equal to? Oh, no. Why is, y is equal to? Two. 2. So what's the square of 2? Four, four. It's 4. There's 4, right up there. Okay. Um, you can see there's a spot down there, down the bottom. It's actually the y-intercept. y equals negative 2. So when you square negative 2, you also get 4. four. Oh, hold on, I'm getting some symmetry here, right? Now, when you get large values and you square them, they get bigger. Let me say that again. Large values, when you square them, they get bigger. But let's zoom, look a little more closely here. I have a spot like this. What's the y value right here? 0.5. It's a half, 0 0.5, right? When you square a small value like this, it doesn't get bigger. A half times a half is a quarter, right? It gets smaller. Small values get smaller, big values get bigger, right? Squaring, it's kind of like, it's like Captain America. It's like that super soldier serum. It makes the bad guy badder and the good guy, anyway, whatever. So. You can see the same thing's happening over here, right? You've got negative a half here. What happens to the negative? I'm squaring, so it's all positive, right? But a half times a half gives me a quarter. It's this really teeny tiny value here. Right? Okay, so you can see now, that's actually a really good question. You know how I drew a horizontal line before? I drew a horizontal line uh, here across at 1, and I'm also going to draw one here at negative 1. Right? So small means between these values, right? Less than one, bigger than negative one. These values here, these small values, they're going to get even smaller. Anything on the outside, see, have a look over here, right? This is um, one and a half. One and a half squared is two and a quarter. It's up there, right? Big values get bigger, small values get smaller. Uh, as some of you predicted, because this is a straight line, right? When you square it, you're going to get a parabola. Go ahead, finish the shape. Say it again. OK, just here, right? So there's the original function right there. It's negative a half. I'm squaring the function. Negative a half times negative a half equals a quarter, which is right there. See that? Oh. You following? So now we're ready to actually draw this thing, right? Do your best. Go through all of your points. There you go. What do you think? How'd you go? Did you get your shape there? Looking okay? So there's my parabola. Okay? I've squared it. Okay, now, this guy here, um, just pay close attention because last time I gave you x squared plus 5x plus 6, this is actually a different parabola. I've done that very much on purpose. Okay? Let's think again about those critical spots. 
Start telling me where are those important values. Okay, let's let's go for negative one. So there, what happens when you square that? It becomes one. It becomes one. There's one. Someone give me another important value. When y equals when y equals to zero. When you square zero, what happens? Zero. You get zero. Where are the two spots? Yeah, just it's not quite. It's actually a weird scale, but you can see where they are, right? There and there. Okay. Now, now it starts to get a little bit tricky. Watch out here, okay? Um, see here, I drew these red lines, right? I'm, I'm going to ask you to draw these again. Uh, I'll make mine a bit thicker so you can see it a bit more clearly. Okay, now between these red lines, right? Between the red lines, I have what I'm calling small values of x. Small values of x get smaller when you square them, right? So I'm going to get really teeny tiny. For example, let's pick a spot like right there. I'm picking this spot because what does that y value look like? Half. That's a half. And I know what a half times a half is. It's a quarter. So I'm going to put in, there's where, oh, there it is. Uh, a quarter is about zero point there, right there. Okay. Now you can see there's another spot over here. See, that's also a half. So when you square this half, what do you get? Half times a half, it's still the same thing, it's still a quarter, right? Like, right, right about, there's the half, there. This is weird, this thing is a weird shape, you'll see why in a minute, okay? Go and have a look for some other important spots, right? Um, I can see there's another half here, what happens when you square that? It's a quarter. And here, where'd it go? I lost it. Um... There, that's negative a half. What happens when you square it? A quarter, right? Like so. So just have a look at these x's. That looks weird, right? I'm gonna have to like kind of wiggle around to, to hit all of those x's. It's gonna be a weird dot to dot, okay? So that's what's happening on the inside. Yep. You're talking about this one here? Okay, again, I'm gonna ask that same question, right? What's this y value? Half. This is a half. So when you square a half, what do you get? Quarter. A quarter. Oh, right. There it is. Okay. So it's on the same y-axis. It's always looking vertically, right? It's always looking vertically. So that's why this is vertical. This is vertical. This is vertical, right? So that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Right. It's, it is tricky. Right? Isn't it almost a shape of the absolute value? Sorta, sorta. Okay. It has some real similarities, but there are some important differences. Okay. Any other important points that you can see? Important values. We did negative one, we did zero, kind of another one missing. What's after negative one and then zero? One. There's just one. We did zero, right? Where is it one? Here on my red line and over there on my red line. What's one squared? One. So I'm going to go through here and here. What is this shape? So it's a wiggly wiggle. It's, it is exactly that. Okay, now I'm going to do my best. Just watch carefully, right? By the way, you know how it says symmetry, right? Symmetry, symmetry in the original oh, yeah. is going to give you symmetry in the square for this, right? All right, I'm going to do my best. Uh, I don't promise a miracle, but here's what I think I've got. That's one side. Okay, so this guy is weird, right? Do you see how weird it is? But in some ways, it should be exactly what you expect. For starters, you're squaring it, right? So do you notice how everything is above the x-axis? Everything's positive? And that's kind of what, as Perrin was saying, this is kind of what it shares in common with an absolute value, right? You square stuff, you get positive values out, okay? Um, but yeah, it gets all these weird, like, wiggles around. Now, you shouldn't be that surprised because what was the original function? What did it look like? It was a parabola, right? So it was an x squared of some kind. We just squared an x squared thing. So you're like, oh, this is an x to the power of not 2, but 4. And that's why it wiggles around so dramatically. Okay?